Hello, uh, everyone watching. Welcome uh, to this uh, fascinating, I'm sure to be fascinating artist talk uh, to celebrate the opening of the brand new art exhibition uh, at the Silk Purse Art Center. It is called In Every Stroke, Calligraphic Explorations. And we have our two artists with us tonight, Renee Alexander and Lucy Yu. And we're going to hear from them and learn a bit more about their backgrounds inspirations and their artistic process and all about uh, calligraphy and what it means to them. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Stephen Snyder. I am the Gallery and Communications Coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Arts Council and we operate all of the uh, art exhibitions and uh, music and other programming that happens here at the Silk Purse here in West Vancouver which is on the unceded and traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples. In particular, that means the Squamish Nation, the tsleil Nation, and the Musqueam Nation. And we are incredibly grateful to our host nations for their stewardship of these beautiful lands since time immemorial and are honored to share them for arts and culture activities like this fantastic art exhibition and artist talk tonight. So this uh, art exhibition uh, here at the Silk Purse is on now, uh, opening today, September 28th, and runs through to October 16th. You can come on down and check it out. Uh, the Silk Purse is in West Vancouver, right on the waterfront, right next to John Lawson Park. And uh, if you have any questions or comments for our fantastic artists this evening, uh, you can drop those in the chat and we will get to them uh, a little closer to the end of the program. So tonight, uh, Renee and Lucy are going to tell you a bit about themselves uh, and their background and their practice. And then we will take a quick tour of the exhibit. Uh, and then the artists uh, have each selected a piece that they're going to go a little bit more in, in depth on. So it should be a fascinating, uh, fascinating uh, evening. So let's welcome our artists uh, tonight. Uh, hello, Renee. Hello, Lucy. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Stephen. And I'd also like to thank the West Vancouver Community Arts Council and Jennifer Lord and Artist Nelson. And of course, you, Stephen, for uh, promoting our work and, and doing so much for the arts in our community. Well, thanks. It's our pleasure. It's, uh, it's always a joy to, to share uh, artwork by fascinating and talented artists like, like the two of you. Thank you. So uh, this exhibition is uh, all about calligraphy uh, and calligraphy is a fascinating art form. Uh, uh, for those of you who maybe need a little bit more of a a grounding for it. Calligraphy is the art of designing and producing uh, decorative lettering by hand. So all of the artwork we're going to talk about and see tonight has been done uh, by hand by these two talented artists. And throughout history, cultures all over the world have developed various styles and techniques and using different media and using the art of calligraphy for different purposes. Uh, so this exhibition's celebrates artists who combine conventional and contemporary approaches uh, from different calligraphy traditions. So to learn a little bit more about our artists, they're each going to introduce themselves uh, and tell you a little bit about them. Uh, let's start with Lucy. Lucy, why don't you uh, tell us all about yourself? Oh, you're still muted. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Stephen. Um, first of all, my name is Lucy Yu. I'm a Chinese calligrapher. And let me thank Stephen for reaching out to me. Um, to, I have the great pressure, a pleasure and opportunity to um, have this exhibition with an um, talented a talent artist, Rene. And thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. It's my honor to be here tonight. And talking about myself, actually I started when I was really young, about under 10 years old. I start to learn this uh, from my paternal grandpa. 
and he's a master calligrapher. And um, I used to make a mess beside him while he was uh, writing and, you know, make a mess on the paper, you know, on the, on the brush and ink. And, and later on after um, I, since I started to write Chinese and he started to teach me how to write calligraphy. And I still remember he holds my hand and write out each stroke one by one and tell me what's the difference between different characters and how the character, the sequential strokes uh, should, should, should praise, should, 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 um, should write. And those small steps is still vividly inside my mind right now. The way he taught me how to grind the ink stick, how to mix water with the ink stick to, to make the ink and how to, um, how to hold the brush and how to make each stroke perfect. And I still remember he stand up quite a bit when he's writing those big characters because he have to use his shoulder, his arms and his wrist to hold the uh, brush. And all these, I absorb it like a sponge in me. Like he planted a seed in me, but at that moment, I didn't know. I didn't realize because I'm still really young. And later on, uh, after he passed away and I completely stopped because there's nobody beside me and, and teach me anymore. And I lose interest. And then on and off in my teenage years, I, I learned from masters still, but it's not that strong craving anymore. And then later on because of school and work and I stopped for quite a bit. Anyway, but I had the opportunity to go to China one time and I went to Xi'an in China where the Terry Carter were warriors are located. Mm -hmm. And in that area in, in Xi'an, there's a Beilin Museum is the museum of a forest of stone tablets from all these years. It's a collection of all those steels. Um, and when I went in, I got stunned because I saw all those stone tablets in front of me, surround me, and some of them are really tall, like 10 feet high. And some of them are smaller, smaller ones. They are from all different dynasties, from all different masters, calligraphers. And when I stood there, I can move. Like at that moment, they are like zoom. Every one of them like talking to me. Hey, you have to come back to us. You can. You can't. You, you have to start it all over again. And I study them. I read them. Seems like they're talking to me. I'm talking to them. Seems like we are connecting. And it's so amazing. And after that, that particular moment, I, uh, I started again. And later on, I have the opportunity, it's, it's my pleasure. I met a really good mentor and he 
he passed away 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago, at the age of 102. And he's just like a father to me. He taught me everything from scratch because he's, he's born, he's born um, in the um, 20th century, the beginning of the 20th century, 1900s. So at that time, people like to do everything by themselves. So he taught me how to, um, even how to broil the glue mm -hmm. and to put the backings on my work and mount it on the wall and do the trimmings and use the silk to do the etching, to do the trimming and to do the flaming. And even he taught me how to carve out my own silk um, in the uh, silk stone and how to, how to choose a good ink sticks, how to grind it into thicker ink and uh, thinner ink, etc. cetera. Everything some, from scratch. So I have to thank him for that because I learned the whole package from this mentor. And, and then um, every year when he had his own calligraphy exhibition, he will invite me to join him to do that. And after a few years, he said, why don't you do it on your own? And that's how I started my uh, solo exhibitions and joined exhibition with other artists, calligraphers. And yeah, that's why I'm here tonight. And thanks Stephen for reaching out to me and inviting me to this wonderful location to have this exhibition with this wonderful talented artist Renee. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that Lucy. That's that's quite the journey you went on to, to get where you are today. That's that's pretty special to, to hear your familial familial connection um, to this art form as well as uh, I think a lot of artists go through periods where they they lose it, you know, they 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 lose interest or or life takes over. But to to, to have yeah. something powerful hit you and, and reignite your passion is is pretty fantastic. You know why I don't want to get back to that because every time I pick up the brush, I will remember my grandpa. So I think. I just don't want to, um, to be sad <laughs> at that moment because every time he's beside me, right? So I have to go through that period of time. Yeah. They do say that uh, that bittersweet uh, feeling that you get um, is, is very, a very creative force though. So I would let it flow. I would, I would embrace it. Yes. Yes. And it's it's great to hear, uh, not just the the uh, that you have learned and still do. Uh, it's not just uh, all the brush strokes. You know, it's not just that. You're also uh, making the scrolls. You're you're doing the silk. You're framing things. How, how that's a part of of and the tradition. The, the steel. Yeah. 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 That's, that's pretty wonderful. Thank you. Now, uh, Renee, why don't you please introduce yourself uh, to well, everyone? Well, thank you, Stephen. Uh, I really appreciate being invited to join Lucy in this exhibition. I just love her work. It's, it's exquisite. I just have a passion for Chinese calligraphy. Um, my background, um, is sort of similar to Lucy's in that uh, I did have a family member who um, initially inspired me. My mother was a calligrapher and my father was an artist, a fine artist, career artist. And, um, but you know, when you're young, you don't always want to do what your parents do. <laughs> so sometimes it takes an outside influence to inspire you. And that person, so, and that's not to diminish my parents. My 
parents were very talented. Um, but my biggest inspiration came from um, a woman by the name of Sheila Waters, who just recently passed away this year. And she was a great uh, master calligrapher, studied at the Royal College of Art. And um, she was a calligrapher and illuminator. And she moved to North America with her husband and I got a chance to meet her when she visited Vancouver. And I took a local workshop from her. And I was just so inspired by her work um, that I thought, wow, this is, this is what calligraphy can be. So I um, studied from her um, in Gaithersburg, Washington. I took some time um, off for two consecutive summers of studying from her. And um, since then I've, I've studied from other great um, master calligraphers. Unfortunately, um, calligraphy here in, in Canada and, and Vancouver, it used to be taught at the art school and, and then they dropped it. And I'm not sure when that was. I, I'm gonna hazard a guess and say the 50s, maybe early 60s, but they dropped it from their curriculum. And it was sort of uh, considered, um, I don't know, like knitting or something, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, uh, one had to go and find, as Lucy did, mentors and, and masters to study from. And so that's where I got my training. This is of course, after I attended art college. Uh, so I did attend art school and then um, pursued calligraphy. Um, as I said, my parents were uh, in inspiration and Sheila Waters, uh, very strong inspiration for me. And then I started a career of, of uh, a professional calligraphy. I've been doing it for, I think on my website, I say over 30 years. So I think I've got to change that and say over 40 years now. <laughs> but I've done uh, many different hands um, and, and work for a variety of, of clients, including uh, the film industry. And uh, not that long ago, I took up illustration as well and paired it with the, with the calligraphy. So there's a, a short run through of my trajectory. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so Thank much you. Uh, for sharing, Renee. Again, a fascinating journey to, to how you got to where you were. Um, it's interesting you mentioned uh, schooling and how calligraphy used to be something that was taught. I went to school for illustration and graphic design. We had like maybe a month we did calligraphy. So we learned how to do a few uh, like Unsho and a little bit of uh, black uh, scripts. Um, black letter? Yeah, black letter. Yes, they see, I totally forgot. We spent so little time doing it. Um, I'm surprised you got it actually. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, CapU. Um, oh, was it Cap University? Yes, yeah, I went to the IDEA program. Um, oh, right, so okay. Like a couple of weeks of calligraphy uh, in our first year. Um, I, I did a workshop, an evening workshop up there uh, many, many years ago. And uh, I can't remember, I think it was called, um, oh, I can't remember what it was called, but it was, it started with traditional calligraphy and then, and then we moved into very gestural uh, calligraphy. Cool. Uh, yeah, the fact that both of you had to uh, find uh, these, these mentors and these, these instructors because it wasn't something that was readily uh, available, whereas you think long, long time ago, maybe not even that long ago, but it was something that was a bit more common that you, you might learn depending, you know, on the type of school you went to, or maybe even just your station in life kind of a thing, but how uh, more recently it's, it's not necessarily, I'm not, I could be wrong, but not necessarily something uh, that everyone is exposed to, or necessarily has the opportunity to explore. Well, I should just, um... I should just bring up the West Coast Calligraphy Society who um, they're located here in, in Vancouver and they bring in a lot of um, calligraphers to teach. And of course, as since COVID, there's been a lot of workshops offered online now. And uh, 
So that's who you have to connect with these, these calligraphy guilds to um, get access and, and knowledge and find a, a, a community. Also, the internet is fantastic for um, a group like us. They, you know, we, we have, uh, we can interact with calligraphers all over the world and they are virtually all over the world. <laughs> Yeah. And it's very exciting, very exciting to connect with them on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, it's uh, connection is something that I'm sure we'll probably talk a lot uh, more about. But that's something Lucy you had said was uh, when you saw those stone tablets, was you really connected with all of the the writing and the characters and the gestures that was on there. And that's, I think, something that this, this art form really does because it uses, uh, it uses words, it uses language. Uh, you know, that, that's something that, you know, if you're someone who, who can read that language, uh, you get it instantly, you know? Yes, exactly. Even now I can still connect with them. Every time when I read some poems, from some famous poets or some ritual songs. Like, uh, I seems like I'm going back to that ancient China, that period of time to reconnect with them. Even the emperor, because the emperor of China, they, they know how to write poems. Their, their calligraphy is, some of them are really fantastic. The emperor, even the emperor. So every time when I look at them, I study their calligraphy, when I read what they, what they wrote on that poem, I know how they feel. And when I see the strokes and I see the space between every words and between every line, I can see the emotions. Because in Chinese calligraphy, it's like qi. When you, when you pick up the brush, it's like all the chi, all the energy will go through, mm. will, will go to your fingers, will go to your whisk. So every time you write something down, it's like expressing your own emotion, your own feelings. In Chinese saying, there's a word, there's a, they say, they're saying like, for every word, for every Chinese calligraphy word that you write, it's the portrait of that calligrapher. And I think that's, that's really correct. Because even now, when I see their work, when I see their calligraphy, I can still feel how they feel at that moment because the thicker strokes, the thinner strokes, the heavier the stroke, the lighter the strokes, it express a lot in those lines and dots in between them. I agree with everything that you've said, Lucy, and oh, in thank you. Western calligraphy, um, the same thing, the, the, the emotion from the artist and their unique style. I, I'm sure that you can look at a piece of work and if you know that other calligrapher, you, re, you recognize their work. Um, it, 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 they come, it comes through in the work. Yeah. And you also said something else that I totally agree with and, and that link to the past. Yes. And calligraphy so much links us. I mean, it has a huge history and it links us back and, and informs us today. Yeah. And I'm so glad because right now it's East meets West, right? Our calligraphy is a little bit different, but we all use our fingers, our, our hand, our wrist to do it. So, and our like, whole bodies. Our whole and body. our whole body. Yes. Yeah. And I can, I can feel, you know, when I look at your work, I can feel it, even though I, I don't know how to do it, but I can feel it. So that's a totally different thing from, um, from painting because for calligraphy, if you make one mistake, even at the very bottom, the very end of that big P, 
piece of paper, you have to start everything all over again. You can use another color to cover it. You can, you can make another stroke because the character is fixed. The, the, the sequential order of that character is fixed and we can make any mistakes, right, Renee? Yes, and it causes a great deal of stress. <laughs> <laughs> yes, anxiety. <laughs> we can cover it. Sometimes makes us bad tempered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. yes, wonderful. Very, very true. <laughs> there was one calligrapher I know. He uses gesso. <laughs> gesso <laughs> over yeah. top, and then and then layers over top, and it's actually fabulous. <laughs> oh really? Oh, that's a good idea. But I can do it. <laughs> but Chinese calligraphy is like black and white, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you can't do anything more. You know, less is more for us. Yes. Like the, the, the space between the dots, between the lines, between every sentence, the space on the top and uh, at the bottom, and left and right, or even in between words and lines, less is more. And those white space actually beautifies the actual black words mm -hmm. yeah. because the contrast of white and black, the whole image is an art. Mm -hmm. The negative yeah. space. Yes. Yeah. Which is one of the most important design elements and tools that you can use to manipulate um, that, uh, that takes a lot of uh, a lot of practice and, and skill to actually use your negative space um, mm -hmm. wisely because it's easy to just to fill everything up because you want to or to put things close together because uh, you think everything needs to be sort of big and bold and, and visible but using your space wisely is it takes a lot of skill yeah yes yes important element yeah contrast yeah and like um for, for Chinese calligraphy, like Renee, you can use a lot of color for your calligraphy, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But you but, know, black and white is also fantastic too, though I don't think I, well, no, there, well, there's very little black and white. I don't think I put anything that's just purely black and white in. Yeah, yeah. well, sometimes people said, oh, is it boring for you because you can only use black? And Ooh, I always really tell them. I always tell them, no, black is every color together. Yeah. All the color together makes black. So in my eyes, I can see beautiful colors in black, right? And um, different fonts and different style. And even though it's only black, but I can still reflect and express different emotions and I can use um, heavier or lighter strokes to express in my own way. I, I just like just like what Stephen um, said, a hint of my own personal style in everyone. And it's so pure too that you're black on white. That where it's the strength of the character that that is holding it all together. There, you're not distracted by anything else. It's that pure form on the page. Yes, thank you, thank you. And how about yours? You can use different colors to, uh, to write your calligraphies. So usually what color do you choose? Well, I, I am not using inks. I, uh, when I do work in, in color, I'm using gouache or watercolor because I can mix any color I want from that. I'm not limited to selecting a bottle of premixed color. So um, I always use gouache when I, when I gouache or watercolor when I, when I do a piece in color. But when I do black and white, of which I do a lot of work in black and white, it is uh, Sumi ink that I use. Speaking of uh, your beautiful work, let's take a quick little tour of the exhibit so everyone watching can get a, a bit of a taste of it. And uh, hopefully we'll entice everyone to come on in and check it out.
Oh, it's beautiful. So this is kind of the, uh, the view that you get um, as you come in off of our waterfront uh, entrance. Mm. Oh, I love that one about the fireplace. Thank you. As you come in, we've got some bios from our artists and a guest book. So you can write them a little note, let them know what you think. And over on this wall, we, we, have, uh, we have Renee's work. As, as you can see, there's, there's a really wonderful illustrative element uh, to these pieces. Yeah. Lovely. Oh, I like how you combine those illustrations and calligraphy together. <laughs> That's really And, nice. and my favorite medium, graphite. <laughs> okay. That's good. There's really, really interesting shapes and things happening, you know, with, with each line and each sort of collection of words, you know, even if there isn't uh, an image to go with it, um, the, the letter forms themselves kind of become a bit of an illustration. Oh, yes. With little birds. This one is nice. It's so cute. <laughs> and then we move on to, uh, to Lucy. Lucy's work. Mm. Oh, now, so very cursive above, but that there's that's a, a different style underneath. Yeah, Lucy. that is the um, modern type standard mm -hmm. script, and mm -hmm. this is a seal script from the ancient time. I love those. I love that cursive style. Yeah. And this is cursive style, cursive script. And the middle one is a running script. And what's this one? Is it, is it running script as well or? This, uh, this is cursive. Cursive. Cursive, yeah. This, because uh, in between the semi-cursive, Okay, because they are uh, the cursive one was um, a little different from that. Yes, and this is seal script. What, how so? How do you spell that? Seal S E A L S E A L. Yes, seal seal script. And for the right hand side, this one is longevity. This is a hundred. The scroll of hundred um, character of longevity in different style of seal script. Beautiful. What does seal script mean? What, what, how, what, what is the oh, mean? The seal script is the uh, very first script. Actually, mm -hmm. and then, uh, hold on a second. This is another one. The last one is. This is fantastic. This, oh, thank you. This is only one word, it's Tao. Love it. In one word. This is the only horizontal ones because I know I don't have a, a lot of space. That's why I only give us even one horizontal <laughs> one. So the seal script is from the um, Chao dynasty and from the Qin dynasty. Actually, Chinese characters start from over 3000 years ago. In the very beginning is, um, is um, they, they carve it on the uh, oracle bones, like on the uh, shoulder blades of, of, the, um, of the oxen. Oh. And on the, um, the flat blades, the underside of the turtle's shell. So at that time it's called oracle bones during the Shang dynasty over 3000 years ago, and then to the Chao dynasty. 
But later on, uh, Qing Dynasty, they started the seal script, which is the one that I wrote for this one. And, and then later on for Han Dynasty, they have the Caraco script. It's a totally different script. And then um, up until now, it's called standard script. Carrasco strip and then uh, running script and then standard script. So um, the standard script is the one, is the most popular one, the modern style Chinese, Chinese writing right now. So, so from the Han Dynasty is like 202 BC uh, till like 220 AD, this Han Dynasty, um, there's an emperor called um, Emperor Gao, Liu Bang. And he got a very fa favorite, he, his favorite concubine is Lady Tang San. And Lady Tang always want to please this emperor because this emperor, he himself knows how to write poems and, and love ritual songs. And then this Lady Tan always want to please him and she composed some ritual songs for this emperor, Emperor Gao. And this is one of her ritual songs. Uh, that I wrote um, all together is like 70 verses, 17 verses. And I wrote the verses 14 and 15 on this scroll in uh, seal script because seal script is the script that, that the Han dynasty people write. So I, um, I write it down like that. So on and off, like after Han Dynasty and through the Tang Dynasty in the 1600 to 980, the script changed. And then Song Dynasty, like 90, 960 AD to 12, 79 AD, Song Dynasty. So all these dynasty, they have their own style. So, um, but for this seal script is an ancient style of writing Chinese character that was common throughout the later half of the first millennium BC. So the first millennium BC, um, after that, people thought, oh, it's too complicated. You know, it's too like, too, um, too complicated, have to use a lot of stress to, to, to write it down. So they evolved into a uh, Carico script and then evolved into um, a running script and then standard script and so on. And right now is a standard script is the most common style in modern writing. So for, for calligraphy to me is an art form, but it's dating back to um, like for the really main uh, writing style is dating back to 200 BC. So it's, um, it's the most important ancient Chinese art form uh, alongside with painting, with Chinese painting, and then throughout the the uh, the, uh, the uh, all, all through the different kind of dynasty, and it's been considered as supreme um, among the visual arts in China because there's four uh, special arts in China um, that. They think is very, you know, the most of the scholar have to learn is Chinese painting, 
Chinese calligraphy, Chinese chess, and the string instrument, the Ku, ku Qing. Uh, it's the, um, the old Chinese string instrument, musical instrument. And all the scholars from the ancient China have to learn all four of these art forms. And I'm glad that I have the opportunity to learn um, to learn these. And the art may appear on, on writing surface and but but they they even write it on the rocky walls of cliffs. Like if you go to China, you can see those um, you know, alongside the mountains, all the um, people like to write calligraphy on the cliffs, on the mountains, and some of them even carve it out so they can stay there forever. Yeah. Just like the stone tablets, they yeah. can stay there forever. Fantastic. And, yeah, and, and, and altogether Chinese uh, characters is over 50,000 characters, but usually we use around two to 3,000 characters. Uh, you know, it's good enough to read for now. And um, for the major scripts, that I usually write is, um, yeah, I, I change quite often. Sometimes I write a uh, sale, sometimes I write curricle and standard and running and cursive, whatever, depends on my feeling. Uh, but uh, I think the organizational structure of lines and dots are very important while also reflecting my emotions and, and some like, other calligraphers may be reflect their morale, the moral integrity or their character, the educational level. And even I can see in yours, like it reflect your character and educational levels and accomplishment in your self-cultivation and intellectual taste of the approach to life. So um, for, 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 for those basic elements of Chinese Calligraphy to me is like representing um, the writing process. It's like with certain directions and with no repetition, repetition, but I can create it during the process. I can create those things syn and synchronize um, all my emotions with the, uh, with the ink, with the brush and with the paper, everything just together, combine, synchronize, like dancing together on the paper, just like what you did on yours, I can tell, like dancing alphabets. It's and your life force. It's your life yeah. energy that you're exuding yeah. onto the paper. Yeah. Yeah. And pro 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 provides for the sequential orders for strokes, and in which means the calligraphy is consists in, in the writing process, right? Uh, at, attached to the, the most important is the overall harmonious beauty, like how to leave out the blanks. And, and the calligraphic works tend to leave an impression of time passing. Even now, I, I look at uh, my work uh, like 20, from 20 years ago, I can tell, I can feel it is the impression of time passing. And every word, every written down, every word once written down forms a space of certain form and style. And that partial continuity undoubtedly give rise to the rhythm, just like dancing with me and compare with other kinds of artistic appreciation. And I think the, appreciation of calligraphic works is easier to bring appreciation to the creative process and to um, experiencing the, the creators like mine in the feelings. And um, yeah. Oh, am I talking for too long? Beautifully I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, beautifully <laughs> said. <laughs> no, no, beautifully said. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, thank you so yeah. much for sharing yeah. um, insights into the art form in general and, to, and that piece uh, in particular. Um, 
it's it's fascinating. I could totally connect with everything you said. I just, oh, thank everything. you, Renee. Yeah. Thank you, Renee. Yeah. Hey, and oh, the, dance, the, the dance, yeah. it is a dance and yes. very strong connection to music. Yes. She has a very strong connection. Yes, and the rhythm. Mm -hmm. Because uh, some of the bigger words, I have to stand up and write it, right? Mm -hmm. Like the bigger words. And every time when I stand standing and writing, like I am dancing with them. Yeah. Like they are dancing with me. So we are synchronized everything together. So, oh, by the way, the name of the, uh, the piece that I wrote is called Songs to Pacify the World for, inner, for Inside the Palace. Yes. Thank you. Lovely. Now we're going to uh, have a bit of a, a closer look at uh, one of Renee's pieces. Pull that up. So Renee, could you tell us, uh, tell us about this work? Yes, um, this quote uh, credited to Nathaniel Hawthorne, though um, I heard somewhere that they thought that some people think that it came from actually a, um, another author and, and it was printed in, in an American newspaper. But anyway, I thought it, I've credited Nathaniel Hawthorne um, with the quote and my mother lettered it in a card, a birthday card for me when I was 18. And it, it struck a chord. Um, you know, we humans uh, seem to be obsessed with trying to find happiness. And um, I'll just read the quote if you can't, uh, if it's not legible for you, but it's happiness is as a butterfly, which when pursued is always beyond our grasp but if you will sit down quietly, may the light upon you. And I just love that, you know, you're not pursuing it, you're allowing it to come to you and it may come or it may not. <laughs> now the, um, the orange and yellow and red lettering, I used uh, gouache and it was done with a pointed brush held very similar to how Lucy would do her Chinese characters. So an upright position, as opposed to holding it like a pencil. And uh, pressure and release is applied to get your thick and thins. And the colors, I had uh, three different colors that I would um, dip my brush into so that you see a variation in color. And that dance of letters, as Lucy was talking about earlier, uh, in the orange, red, and yellow lettering, is to give the feeling of a butterfly, the, the dancing, fluttering movement of a butterfly. Then the, the message, uh, you know, how, how, you know, the uh, main message of how to get the happiness is written in capitals done with a broad edge nib, a chisel edge nib. So it's a wedge at the end and they're built up capitals. So when I say built up, you're applying multiple strokes to get your thicks um, and thins. And though you do have the chisel edge and you do will at a certain angle get thicker strokes, I'm still going over some of the strokes to get a, a wasted um, uh, shape to a, to a down stroke. So you'll get it a little thicker at the top, wasting in the middle and flaring out just a little bit subtle. And these are based on an old style of lettering called versals, but they're um, dancing and, and playing with one another. So the, the W, the H is going to uh, play with the W, it's going to move. And then the, then the I is interacting with the H and so on. So you're sort of designing the letters as you go along. And that is, uh, also done in gouache, it's a Prussian blue. 
And then the butterflies I painted with, um, you know, a watercolor brush. It comes to a fine point and uh, it's layers of watercolor wash on there. Um, it's interesting, I, I was talking before about how history does inform us. And so, um, you know, here's, here's a copy of the Book of Kells, an ancient manuscript from the eighth century. And here, you know, I'm really not doing anything new here. You can see in the pages that, um, that they're applying little illustrations and they're dancing within, within the letters. Similar to what I've done in some of the pieces like the Sing a Song Sixpence, the blackbirds are, are dancing within and outside of the, of the uh, letter forms. And here's a, a 15th century manuscript. And you can see oh, you know, a little it. illustration of a flower within the letter form. So it's the same idea, but it's a, a more contemporary approach. And then of course I'm using um, modern uh, tools not a quill <laughs> um, for some of the other pieces, uh, the lettering's been done with a, a pointed, a pointed nib, which uh, again, you're applying pressure and release to get your thick and thins as opposed to this chisel edge, which I don't know if you can see the chisel or the, the it's square at the edge. Can you see that? Yeah. And by holding it at a certain angle, uh, a lot of traditional calligraphy, italic hand, uh, you know, the 45 degree angle to get the thick strokes as you're coming down and then you pull up and you'll get a thinner stroke. This is, a, you press and you'll get a thick stroke. Lift and it gets lighter to a hairline. And the same with the brush. Well, Lucy, you'd know this with the pointed brush same idea, pressure and release. So um, is there any, any questions that you have about that piece or how it was, how it was done or, oh, and, and the, um, it's, it's done on uh, Reeves BFK paper. It is paper. Um, all my pieces are on paper, most of them BFK. Um, the uh, life is a leaf the Leonard Cohen quote with the il uh, illustration of the dried leaf. That is, um, that is done on uh, hot press watercolor arches. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's great to, to have the film and, and pictures of the, of the pieces, but nothing beats seeing them in person. And so really I strongly recommend viewers to come down and actually see it. The colors are different, uh, the intensity, you'll just see it uh, a much better view if, if you see it in person. Nothing replaces that. Yes, I agreed. Yeah. Yeah, 100% you can just uh, get lost in all of the different shapes and strokes and, and spaces and trying to, you know, figure out one, what everything says, but two, just uh, figuring out the process. Because as, as you both mentioned, uh, the weight of, of your brush or your pen is very important to how everything's going to turn out. So you can sort of pretend you're doing it yourself and trying to figure out how, how heavy and how light you, each, you had to do it to, to create each form. Uh, it's, yeah, in person is, is a, a truly stunning experience uh, to take it in. Yeah. And you can do that until October the 16th. Yay. <laughs> Good. Yeah, that was, uh, that was fantastic. Now, I, just had, I had a, a question. Um, everyone watching in the chat, I think they're just enthralled in listening and not thinking about asking anything. Um, but I have a question about, um, since both of you are 
professional uh, calligraphers. Um, if you could uh, maybe explain that a little bit more because that involves more than just having um, an exhibition, right, in, in a gallery because you, you might be commissioned to do work um, or you might have um, products uh, that carry your work on them. So if you could each explain a little bit about what, uh, what being a professional calligrapher um, is like for each of you. Renee, you can go first. Okay. This time. <laughs> well, um, for many, many years, I did an awful lot of awards and um, certificates and, uh, you know, built a, a, a career uh, with that. And, and uh, I always called it the bread and butter work. Um, and of course it provided, you know, I put in my 10,000 hours. <laughs> Uh, of practice, you know, just do, just doing a lot of that work. Um, a calligrapher is also uh, asked to inscribe books. You know, um, there are many books that are are bound. Um, I've done the the um, books for the Capilano University uh, when they grant someone a degree. Uh, I've also done books for other associations. So that's when they when you have to letter and not make a mistake, right, Lucy? Yeah. <laughs> in a book. Um, so it's very careful work that you have to do. Um, I also produce uh, uh, cards and, and prints, which the Silk Purse uh, has sells in their gift shop, which I'm thrilled. And um, you do get people commissioning you to do things. Um, uh, like uh, their wedding, their wedding vows. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I also have done a lot of work for the film industry. And a very fun project was working on the Lemony Snicket series and um, doing the, the, little, the books and the illustration uh, for that series, the Netflix one. And um, um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I did Monty's snake book and it actually gets quite a bit of, of uh, airtime <laughs> in, the, in the film. I was thrilled. They had the camera over the children's shoulders. They're leafing through the books. And, the, and then that one I had to do, draw a snake. Uh, yeah, I, I used uh, pencil crayon and I um, did the snakes and also the, um, writing, Monty's writing. And um, for some reason, uh, whenever I'm asked to do the writing for a man in a film, they always say, well, he's a man, so make it messy. And I always try to say, well, that's not necessarily true. And if it's a period piece, like uh, Little Women, uh, I say, no, that was the sign of a very well-educated man if he had a good good penmanship that was uh, high uh, uh, in the education then but uh, they're never convinced <laughs> so um, I do messy writing for for them um, another thing I had to do was um, uh, later on, on the third season of the Lemony Snicket series the um, the combined book and I was I was the character Beatrice and um, I remember doing several illustrations for that one. And her hand had to be very precise. So I did a copper plate style um, lettering for that using uh, this type of pen, the pressure and release and very, very precise. But they're fun. And uh, always with the, with the film, film commissions, uh, they want it yesterday. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. So for me, um, actually, sometimes after I did the exhibition, people will approach me and ask me to make some special, like to write some special poems for them, for their, for their, for their company or for their, or for their home or for somebody's um, birthdays or weddings. And 
they usually reach out to me after they see my exhibitions or by referral. So I don't have my own website. So um, usually just by referral. And, um, and for, for, for many years already, um, like the companies, the, like all, all those, um, you know, companies from the States, they reach out to me and ask me to help them for their um, like annual dinners or for their customer appreciation nights or something like that. They will display my works um, on that day. So, um, or I will go there and to um, communicate with their customers. They will ask me questions, something like that. And like the, um, like even the financial banking, uh, uh, banking corporates. And they used to ask me to go there every year. But since pandemic, I stopped because, uh, uh, yeah, because of my own reasons. <laughs> uh, my parents are in their 90s. So, um, but after, I think I, I'm going to start all over again now. I think because the pandemic is, uh, seems like it's not as, as scary now. So, and sometimes people like, uh, uh, people will give somebody, if, if they give birth to a, a, a baby, baby girl or baby boy, they will ask me to think of a name for them. And then I'll write it down for them and frame it. And then they will put it up uh, on the home or they will use it as a gift for somebody. And during those uh, birthdays, and they will ask me write the um, special meaningful sentence or a, a special um, a characters for, for their parents or for their, you know, um, their uh, grandpa or something like that and grandma. And usually I would think of something that I like them to, to uh, keep for, for a longer time, not only at that day, on that day or that moment, because they can keep it and they can uh, give it to their son later on, they can give it to their grandchildren later on. So I always like to write something that can, uh, that can last, yeah. And um, sometimes uh, people will approach me um, um, and ask me to write the whole poem and they will print it out themselves. I don't know what they will uh, give it to, but they will print it out themselves after I did it for them. And then um, some of them, they put it on prints. I don't know because uh, some of them is in, in the Asia. As I have said, I, I visit uh, China and Asia before. So actually I learned a lot from, from all those masters in Asia and, uh, and China, even in Taiwan or in uh, um, different parts of China. And I like to go to museums and learn from them because I think, I think those this distinctive art, uh, uh, Chinese forms of calligraphy, it, it offers an important channel for the appreciation of, of traditional culture, Chinese culture and for the uh, Chinese arts education. So for me, it's also like a source of pride and pleasure for, for me and for the Chinese people and embodies the important aspects of the country's intellectual and artistic heritage because I would love to keep those heritage. Just like my, um, my mentor uh, taught me the whole package because uh, I don't think, not too many, many people do this anymore because it's, it's a uh, lost art. But I think a lot of people can still do it, but not as common and not as popular. Um, 
if you are the professional, then of course you can do it, but not for, you know, ordinary people. So I would love to keep those um, artistic heritage. And I would like to um, like say thank you to them um, because this is how they taught me. So I would like to keep it and refract it on my calligraphy. And yeah, like that. Thank you. Lucy, do you teach? Do yes. You teach? Yes. I forgot to mention that too. Teaching is a, is a big part of uh, what I do now too. Yeah. Yes. That's wonderful to be able to, as you both said, uh, pass, pass these, these skills and, and this love for this art form down because there is, you know, it seems less and less people maybe have the opportunity to, to take it up. Um, you know or, why that is? It's, it's because it, it's a demanding form. Uh, it takes many, uh, it takes a long time to become proficient. And yes, uh, that's true. The, the, the practice that you have to put in, I mean, I was joking before, it, it is true that <laughs> I'm sure Lucy and I have put in 10,000 hours. Yes, um, yeah. To, and people nowadays, they seems like they are too busy. They have, uh, you know, after iPhone, I, I, I don't think the kids will sit there for hours to write calligraphy because they get distracted. And yet, the is that not an important thing for them to do? I mean, what does it do? You know, it, it's proven that it builds brain branching. Um, it, 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 it's, it's very important. It's, you know, what we are as humans. And, yeah. and to go back to, you know, to, to this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice mm -hmm. one, Teresa. Yeah. Lost iPhone yeah. emergency. Teresa. No, that, no, it's all good. Yeah, that connection um, to your own self, right? Like as you as you're talking about to your to your own mind and your own body that you can make through through creating art. Um, yeah, is just as important as that connection you can make uh, with. Uh, your culture and your heritage uh, by keeping these traditions going and the connections you can make with the community, like the people who are going to uh, come and see it at an exhibition and maybe have never experienced uh, calligraphy in this way before, or the people who are commissioning you for uh, these, these corporate pieces or even these yes. personal pieces you know it's, it's it's all about making connections it seems and I should just bring up I forgot to mention um you know I've done and I'm sure Lucy you've done this as well a lot of work for for graphic designers because they don't yeah. want to use the yes. standard uh fonts Form. on the computer yeah. even yes. though you know they can manipulate them somewhat they want something very unique yes and you know I can do an italic hand uh, Lucy can do an italic hand and they're both totally different. Um, so it, you know, it's an important thing for people to remember when they see the exhibit, this is done with the human hand and simple. Not print out. Yes. Yeah. Not, yeah, I, not manipulated by the computer, not uh, erased on uh, Photoshop or Illustrator, not vectorized to change the stroke that what came, was put down on the paper with the human hand, with a simple tool, that's it. Yes, totally agree. I, I used to um, write for the uh, Richmond Art Center during the Heritage Month. Um, they, they've got the exhibition and I wrote really big Chinese characters for them. And yeah, that's not print. But they print it out, right? But the, the original one, just display over there, is, is, yeah. is like original handwriting. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. And for, for, for me, the, the immense skill and the judgment and the, like the fine judgment of, of calligraphy is it's, uh, regarded as uniquely revealing to the character. And... Um, is, is unique for each, every one of the words is unique. 
you can have the identical ones. Printing can do it. Can do it. Yeah. Printing can have identical, but for for calligraphy, handwriting for for our for our calligraphy, no. Sorry. And that, and that and that computer generated fonts, they 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 are lifeless because the 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 desire for it to be so exact and so perfect that there is no life in it. Yes, I can say that they are not breathing. That's right, exactly. Yeah, but ours are breathing. You can breathe with us. <laughs> and for, for me, myself, I like Chinese literature and I, I like I like the um, Chinese history. So so maybe that's the, the reason because I got the genes from my grandpa and I'm glad I got his genes. And I hope other people can appreciate what we did um, for, for calligraphy. And I know nowadays uh, young kids, maybe they are not have this patient anymore to sit down, but I encourage the parents to, um, to let them learn something about their own heritage. And I think that's good for them you know, mentally, physically, and the way to express your own feelings and emotions is like playing piano, like playing musical instruments. It's the same. You take time. It takes time to, 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 perf to make perfections. And if you can make time for, for violin or piano, why can't you make time for calligraphy, right? There's a, an interesting story. Um, my sister um, used to teach and she taught at the high school level. And um, she sensed a lot, you let young people have a lot of anxiety today. And uh, she um, taught them how to do calligraphy uh, in her class, just, you know, just, uh, she, it was an English class actually. And, and she just taught them a little bit about calligraphy and they found it very meditative and calming yeah. and they oh, would yeah. sit and do it, um, a little bit, maybe before she began the lesson and it would just center them and calm them. And they loved it because it is a meditation. Yes. I agree. I like to, uh, if you, you know, you're talking about meditation, I like to put some incense while I'm writing and some Chinese music uh, as a background. I like to, you know, indulge in that, in that moment to, um, you know, Chinese writing, Chinese musical, you know, uh, I mean music at the back and incense, all these combine combination of all these uh, moods will will give me some creative ideas will ignite some um, creativity in me that's what I thought and the way that uh, I think that in the Asian ancient times people will do the same thing so after a few thousand years I'm doing the same thing so so I'm just copying them, but I just like this process. I, I just like this, uh, this way of um, writing. It, every time when I write, it just, I'm just like so relaxing. And it's like, I don't have to think about anything else. I just concentrate on that piece of paper on my brush. I can forget about everything on this earth. <laughs> yeah, don't listen to the news <laughs> when you're doing it. <laughs> Pick up calligraphy. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Lucy and Renee, for sharing. Your thank you, insights. Stephen. Yes. Thank you, Stephen. Passion for this art form. Uh, it's been a fantastic conversation. And oh, thank, thank you, you, everyone, for watching uh, and uh, please, uh, while this exhibition is still up, come on in and uh, have 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 a look at the, at the silk purse here in West Vancouver. Um, on until October the sixteenth, you can see the fantastic calligraphy of Lucy Yu and Renee Alexander.
So thank you, both of you, uh, for sharing your artwork. And thanks, to everyone, for watching. I hope you all have uh, a wonderful rest of your day. Thank, thank you, Stephen. You.